Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have 3 to the power x minus 2 root 2 to the power x equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. Great. And we're going to be approaching this from two different angles, even though those methods are pretty similar. Let's go ahead and start with the first method. Now, if you go ahead and think about the 3 as the square root of 9, and raise it to the power x, and 2 root 2 as the square root of 8 to the power x equals 1. x equals 2 is clearly a winner, right? Because 9 minus 8 is equal to 1. 9 minus 8 is equal to 1. So is that the only one? Let's go ahead and find out and explore a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this, 3 to the power x minus 2 root 2 to the power x equals 1. In this case, the highest exponent, or should I say base, right? The highest base is 3. We have three bases, 3, 2, root 2, and 1. Even though 1 is not raised to any power, I guess you could just assume that it's 1 to the power x. Make sense? Just for consistency. And then we can basically divide everything by 3 to the power x. Make sense? Let's do it. 3 to the power x divided by 3 to the power x minus 2 root 2 to the power x divided by 3 to the power x. Again, 3 is the highest base, and that's why we're dividing by that. And now we get something nice. First of all, 3 to the x divided by itself is 1. And this one can actually be written. Two things are divided by the uh, with the same base, I mean with the same exponent. So we can just divide the bases and use a common exponent, right? That's the rule. And this expression right here can also be written as 1 over 3 to the power x. Because 1 to the power x is 1, so it wouldn't matter, right? And how is this helpful though, right? We can go ahead and put everything or the variables at least on the same side. So let's go ahead and write it this way. 2 root 2 over 3 to the power x plus 1 third to the power x equals 1. So it's a little nicer. And what is the difference between this one and the original? First of all, there was a minus sign. We turned it into a plus sign. And second, we have variables. Well, it was the same. Anyway, the major, the major difference is I think we have x's on the same side. But if you think about it, this one is a decreasing function. And why is that so? Because 2 root 2 over 3 is less than 1. And how do we know that? We know that because 2 root 2 is less than 3. That's why we divided by 3 to the power x, because that is the highest power. And how do you know 2 root 3 is less than 3? Well, because 8 is less than 9, if you square root both sides, you're going to get that. And that's going to give you that. Okay, makes sense? Cool. So that's a decreasing function because the base is less than 1. And remember, with exponential functions, the base is between 0 and 1, means it's decreasing. Same thing here, it's also decreasing. So the sum of two decreasing functions is also decreasing. What is that supposed to mean? A decreasing function that goes down like this, not necessarily like that, but you get the idea, which is being intersected by a horizontal line that can only happen at one point. Make sense? The same idea between increasing and decreasing functions, they intersect at a single point. But if a function is increasing and then decreasing, of course, you have to be careful about the intervals on which it's increasing or decreasing. Make sense? So, what does that mean? It just means that there's going to be a single solution. And if you test x equals 2 because, well, why do we test x equals 2 first, right? You might be questioning. Okay, let's start with x equals 1. Why not, right? If x equals 1, then we're going to get 2 root 3 over 3 plus 1 third which is equal to 2 root 2 plus 1 divided by 3, and that does not equal 1. So x equals 1 does not satisfy this equation because this is not equal to 1. We know that because this is not 3, because this is not 2, because root 2 is not 1. Make sense? So 1 didn't work. But notice that as you increase the x values, you're going to get smaller results, and this is definitely greater than 1. So larger value would work. Uh, in this case, you would test x equals 2, if you square 2 root 2 over 3 and 1 third at the same time, you would get 8 over 9 and 1 over 9. Obviously, their sum is 1. So x equals 2 actually 
satisfies this equation therefore is a solution and by this it's the only where is that decreasing why I, I deleted it anyways you get the idea that it's the only solution so x equals 2 is the only only solution make sense so far so good okay let's go ahead and take a look at the second method which is a tiny bit different and I'm gonna be looking uh, approaching it a little differently so with my second method I want to go ahead and first write these because of the square roots and I kind of talked about it right I can write this as 9 to the power x over 2 and this as 8 to the power x over 2 because any number to the power 1 half in the real world is going to mean square root. What about the complex world? That would be a good question, right? How do you solve this problem in complex complex world? That would be an interesting question. I, I don't think there's an easy answer. But anyway, let's just keep it real for now. And here, this is what I'm thinking. Since I see that uh, x over 2 is being repeated, let's go ahead and call that something. How about t? We get 9 to the t minus 8 to the t equals 1. And I think everybody knows that 9 minus 8 is equal to 1, right? Now, here's one thing to keep in mind. If t is positive, obviously these are both exponentials, but 9 to the power t will beat 8 to the power t, right? It's going to be above. Obviously, at 0, they get the same value, so it's kind of like this. At 0, they're going to be here. But at 1, one of them is going to be 8. The other one is going to be at 9. So the curves are actually going to start differing, right? So one of them, which is the 9 to the power t, by the way, is always going to be above for positive values of t. Make sense? Great. So now, if t is greater than 0, then this number is going to beat the other number. So let's go ahead and make a table of values because that's one of the best ways to now look at how these values behave or their differences. So I'm going to make a table with four columns. And the columns are going to be t, 9 to the t, 8 to the t, and then the difference between these two columns. And then I just want to make uh, several rows so I can kind of use different values and kind of look at the behavior, okay? Let's go ahead and replace t with some values. Such as if t is equal to 1, it's going to be 9, this is going to be 8, their difference is going to be 1. Awesome. If t is 2, this is going to be 81. This is going to be 64. Their difference is going to be 17. When t is 3, uh, this is going to be 729. And this is going to be 512. And their difference is going to be 217. By the way, that's kind of interesting because the 2 and the 3 case, they both have 17. But that doesn't mean anything, right? Does it? Anyways, you get the idea. As t increases, and of course, I use integer values. But even if you use something else, it will still increase. The difference is getting bigger and bigger. So we have to catch it at 1, which is uh, at t equals 1. Now, what happens if t is less than 0, right? If t is less than 0, you can go ahead and set t equals negative n, and you're going to get something like 9 to the power of negative n minus 8 to the power of negative n, and then 1 over 9 to the n minus 1 over 8 to the n, and that's going to be negative. Why? Because in this case, n is going to be positive, and... 1 over 9 to a positive power is going to be greater, I mean, less than 1 over 8 to the power. So, what happens if t is equal to 0? We get a solution, right? Do we? No, not really. <laughs> Their difference will be 0, so it's not going to be 1. Therefore, our solution has to be positive for t, and that happens at t equals 1, or x equals 2, and that will be the only solution, right? And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.